We plan to do some snorkeling today, but uh, as you can see, the weather is pretty overcast. So instead of doing that, we decided we may as well try and get a sail in. That's not working out too well either because there's no wind. Still, it's nice to be on the move and at least doing something. I put the line out. Liz was telling me about YouTube videos she's been watching on fishing, fishing tips. Now she was telling me the, uh, the line's gone. <laughs> Uh, we'll uh, talk more to Liz about her techniques, which obviously work because we got another fish. Yeah, hopefully it's a fish and not a bag. <laughs> it got off. That's, that hasn't happened for a long time. There was a massive pull, bang, down. I thought it may have taken the lure, but the lure's there, so I'm going to put it out again. I don't know if you caught that, but uh, it jumped off. It got very close got something but it went off. That hasn't happened in a long time. I haven't lost anything for a very long time. I'm not quite sure why that happened. Uh, but I kept the lure so that was good news. So we're on our way back towards the marina. Not going to go in there yet but hopefully we will be able to anchor outside the yacht club. Depending on the state of the sea we'll find that out when we get there. Nice little anchorage this, but uh, we're leaving. We've just spent one night here. We went over to the yacht club for lunch, which was very pleasant. It's funny because there's actually an airport right there, but uh, very few airplanes fly. I mean, what, two a day, I think? So it doesn't disturb us at all. I just went for a lovely long walk all the way along this beach. And what's encouraging is, is that uh, I always thought Kotakin and Baloo was a bit disappointing on the beachfront because so much of it is reclaimed land. But actually, when you come around this corner, and you see this beach, it's magnificent. It's, uh, what, about two miles long, I suppose? Maybe a mile, uh, but it's beautiful. It's, it's a nice spot, so hopefully we'll come back here. Um, but we're going to anchor now outside the marina because tomorrow I'm going diving. What are we doing, Liz, apart from moaning? I'm stowing, as usual, the uh, lines. Because they're a right mess. We're on our way to try and find an anchorage close to the marina so that you can go ashore in the dinghy and go diving. Right, basically we're sailing. That's what she's trying to get at. We're only doing two knots, a little bit over two knots, but the silence and the, just the trickling sound of the water. Oh, I could stay out here for hours, you know. It's the early evening in Borneo, and we're just hanging around here until we find a nice anchorage. Well, we found the anchorage. It's a place, a spot that we're happy with to leave the boat tomorrow. I have got the line out. And I have seen some really big fish in the marina, but uh, we'll find out if there are any around here. We've only got about 20 minutes. Well, here we are outside 
the <laughs> yacht club. But here's the weird thing: that clip you just saw was actually recorded what two, three two months? months ago, I think. Something yeah, like that. something like that. And yet here we are in real time. So this bit here is being recorded in August, and we just so happen to be outside the yacht club, so it does fit in quite nicely. It's like Groundhog Day all yes. over again. Yes. Yeah, here we are again. Yeah, Liz will tell you about that in a minute. <laughs> I just wanted to say, actually, sorry, we didn't show you any footage of that beach, which we should have done, really, but the problem was, at that <laughs> point, we just bought our Fitbits, and I think we were so obsessed with measuring our zone minutes and yeah. how many paces and making sure we did 10,000 steps. <laughs> we yeah. forgot to take some footage. We forgot to do any photography for ages yeah. because all we cared about was fitness. And look, you can tell because look how fit we look. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we do have a little bit of footage we can overlay from yeah. from when we did our rally last year. This That was the same beach where we had our little leaving party from. Uh, so if ever you do find yourself in KK when it does all open up, I can recommend that beach. It's fabulous. Tanjung Aru. Yes. Yeah. Right. So, Liz, tell us why we are back here, yes. because this is actually quite important to us, us, our videos and us being here. Yeah. So it's August the 14th today as we shoot right now. And uh, we are coming to the end of our visa once again in, in uh, Malaysia. As you know, we've been here since January 2020, unable to go anywhere. Normally, all the way through that, we've been in lockdown, can't even sail some of the time. So uh, Malaysia have been wonderful to us, but in May, they decided they were going to kick all foreigners out. They were no longer mm. going to let us stay forever, and uh, it got very, very frightening. A lot of yachts that we know quite well had to leave. They had no choice. They had to go. But we were very lucky here. We have an agent who looked after us. Thank you, Alvin. Thank you, Alvin. And we have Sasley, who runs uh, the Sail Malaysia Rally. Thank you, Sasley. Thank you, Sasley. And we have the marina and backing have, up as well. So yes. thank you, Rick. We had a lot of really important people people helping our case mm. and they put the case to and James James in Pancor we James, should give James yes. a big shout out as well they're all oh. these people you know this is the wonderful thing is that actually we've spent so long in Malaysia now we have made some good friends yes. who are also good contacts as well yeah. so uh, these people Liz just name checked have been yes. we've got to give them a big shout out yeah they're all fantastic people we really just love uh, everything that they've done so they pulled out all the stops talked to the authorities and we got dispensation as cruisers as full-time liverboards to stay Mm. They made the case that we had nowhere to go, that the uh, sailing was impossible, that all the borders were closed. So that was brilliant. So we got brand new visas, so we started all over again. Now, the visas are now up. They're coming to the end of, the, of three months. Normally, in normal times, you extend for another 60 days, and then after that, you extend for another 30 days. We are now at the stage where we've got to extend again to that 60 days, and we're slightly on tenterhooks. Yes, we are on tenterhooks because there is no guarantee they're going to no. give it to us. Uh, it, hopefully they will do. Uh, and, and even if they do, as Liz says, that's another 60 days and then finally there's a 30 days. That still only takes us up to November, I think, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, after which we really will have to leave. Yeah. Now, at that point, we have, we have to make sure that either Singapore or the Philippines or Indonesia has completely opened up to allow us to exit the country and perhaps more importantly that Malaysia is allowing us back in because it may be that we actually have to leave the boat here and fly out yeah. somewhere uh, but of course if Malaysia is still closed and there is every chance it could be uh, we won't be able to return so this is why we oh. are on tenterhooks. Here we go here we go again it's just constantly constant anxiety. Mm. One thing we've done which may help the situation is that we are now both double dosed thank you Malaysia for doing that for yep. us we've got the Pfizer vaccine twice which does allow us to um, travel around inland much more easily than we have been able to up, to up till now so I'm hoping we're really hoping that that's going to help us with international borders as well yeah right back to the last little clip of this week's episode uh, now hopefully you caught Liz's fabulous fishing episode <laughs> she uh, released a couple of weeks ago which was really well received uh, but in it you mentioned your birthday present you bought yeah yourself. my new rod yes. your new rod and your new reel yes and uh, you had said in that video that you were going to show in a following episode how to rig it up so yeah. if anyone buys a rod and reel and they don't know how to rig it up properly this last little extract will help explain demystify <laughs> putting your rig together. So I've gone and done it. I've bought myself a new reel <laughs> and rod. It's a Shimano Talica 16 reel and the rod is a, a Penn Senator. 
they should do the job they should do the job to catch the kind of fish that we're fishing for here a nice lightweight uh, reel and uh, a good strong rod so here it is this is my new reel after I don't know five or six years using my pen I just I've decided to branch out and get another reel so that I can have one on either side of the boat rather than a troll and I've gone for the Talica 16 uh, it's kind of not much choice in this shot but it is a pretty good reel big enough for the kind of fish I want to get I've now got to put it all together and that's quite interesting I've been reading up on it and I've been watching videos and there's one really good one by Ultimate Fishing which uh, takes you through the whole process of putting it together so I'm going to pretty much follow his advice first off you put some electrical tape on the bottom of the reel because there is a possibility there might be a problem with the different metals meeting from the reel to the rod and, and that and a little bit of lanolin just helps the potential corrosion that might happen in the future and I'm pretty much going to follow his suggestions right now. So got the electrical tape on the reel on the backing we've got the grease on the rod so now we just insert and do up but not completely tight because you just want to check to make sure that it is absolutely straight against the rollers and once you're completely happy with that tighten it right up. So I unwrapped the, the rod, there was still a lot of plastic and bits and bobs uh, all, all stuck around the handle and underneath three layers of different things I found a sticker which said slick butt. Slick butt slides easily in and out of rod holders for fast action. <sighs> is that just angler's humour or is that the manufacturer's humour? But thanks so much, I've now got a slick butt. The Talica reels come with uh, reel clamps, which is great. So it gives you that extra bit of confidence that it's not gonna fall off. And I've put mine on um, as per the instructions on the video where he suggests that you, again, you grease everything to try to avoid as much corrosion as possible. And even put a little bit of that uh, amalgamating tape between the, uh, the clamp itself and the rod. So I've done all that, clamped it all together, clamped it down nicely and it's well bedded in there, I think. To spool the braid onto the reel, you have to create a bit of tension so that it's nice and tight. And you either have to have a willing person to sit there and do it with you, or one of these really flash professional spooling jobbies, or you can do what I do. If you're on a yacht, you've got loads and loads of rigging, Rig it rather like you would a sewing machine, putting it round and round lots of things that just gives it a reasonable amount of tension and then use your finger as you're rolling on to also give it some tension and then gradually keep rolling, keep putting it on. Uh, this Talica doesn't have one of those nice little guides that does it all for you so I have to do it with my finger. <laughs> and I've, I've put all the braid that I had left on and now I'm going to fill the rest of the reel up with a monofilament. 